Hey everybody, it's Holly from Cape Cod Creatures, and I am here. Um, I'm a little late to the contest, but that's okay, because, um, um, you know, ultimately the point of these videos is to get to know everybody in the tarot community a little bit better and to broaden my social horizons. It's not just for contests. So, um, but I'm, so I'm going to do the Tarot Tag 15 uh, put out by Arwen. She's got a wonderful YouTube channel. Um, I'm a longtime lurker um, as far as her stuff is concerned but she's very relatable and personable um, so if you're looking if you're a beginner looking for some good tarot information or good tarot discussion um, definitely check out her stuff so anyway without further she put out a tarot tag hashtag tarot tag 15 and it's 15 questions um, so I'm gonna hopefully make this video not too too long so uh, right away, let's get into it. So um, I've got the questions right up on the screen, by the way, so that's why I'm gonna keep looking over. Uh, the first question is, what is your current favorite deck? And um, I have to go with pretty much uh, everybody whose replies I've been watching are, um, it's gotta be the uh, mass marketed Wild Edition, uh, or Wild Unknown, the mass market edition of Wild Unknown. Um, the deck just speaks to me. I like how there's no people in it. Um, I like the backs, um, although I have to say I do miss the diamond, like the, 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 um, the first edition has a diamond pattern on the back and I really, really enjoy that. But if you're mixing this deck with the Animal Spirit Oracle, I do like how it's the same pattern, like the snake skin. Uh, the cards are just absolutely easily shuffled and bendable. Um, they read really well. Uh, if I was to nitpick it, I would say that on some cards, the borders tend to float. You don't see that in the um, in, in the first edition. See how like this one is on the furthest in this, but I mean, otherwise it's a great, great deck. The imaging just really speaks to me. Um, I find that even though her, her, um, her minor arcana tends to be a little pippish, um, there is stuff in there if you look at it long enough, um, it, it's her, her artwork is very deliberate as far as that's concerned. So, um, again, my favorite deck. Um, I do have other favorites, though. I will use Line Strider. Um, I would use that one more if it was on better cardstock. It is, like, the thinnest cardstock I have ever um, seen Llewellyn come out with. Um, and I like the uh, Animal Totem Tarot is a good one. Um... I've got a lot of um, indie decks that I like to use. I just received Star Child. I feel like that's going to be a good one that I'll go to. Um, I backed a couple on Kickstarter. I can see those being some go-to decks for me. Um, <clears throat> I, I just got the Fountain, which is a great one. Oh, and I've absolutely been loving this one that I got from Japan, the Bird Tarot. Um, you've seen me post it all over Instagram the past, like just even in the past day. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a ton of, I love all my tarot decks, but if you're going to go for, um, like ones that I read with most often, it's going to be wild unknown. Um, okay. So what, what tarot card do you think stands for who I am now? Um, <clears throat> wild unknown, since it is the deck that I work with the most is the one that seems to mention me specifically as the daughter of swords, but not so much as like super observant it's it, I'm really judgmental and um, I tend to nitpick and um, I can be kind of negative sometimes so um, this 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 card comes up this is how the deck mentions me um, so that that has been really interesting um, but yeah it's 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 absolutely right it's I, I can I tend to be a little cranky and biting and um, it's because my observation of the human race has left me a little misanthropic. So, um, you know, it just, I'm trying to change that. I'm, I'm working actively to not be that person anymore. But um, I think for now, especially when I am like in, in one of my moods, the, the, the deck will be like, stop being a bitch. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I am now um, in this specific deck anyway, that's, that's how I am mentioned. Um, I have not seen myself come up in other decks. I don't like to read for myself very often. That's another question down the list. But anyway, um, what tarot card um, stands for who I want to be? That would be a two-parter. Um, 
because I would love to get more in touch with my intuition and, um, you know, figure out what's going on with this thing that I'm doing, the spiritual atheism that I've been taking part in. I would absolutely love to be a little more like the high priestess, um, just a little more in touch with that part of my life. And then the other thing I think that we should all strive to be is uh, temperance. Um, it's just balance. I mean, it's the middle path. It's everything that, you know, um, it's everything that we should all strive to be, you know, not, to, it's not too much, not too little. It's as you know, all good things in moderation and, you know, a little bit of difficult. Like Bob Ross said, you have to have the bad times. So, you know, when the good times come, Oh, he makes me cry that Bob Ross. Um, okay. So draw a tarot card and tell us how it answers the question. What does the universe want me to know right now? Um, okay, so we'll do Wild Unknown. Uh, and I am still, I don't have my guidebook with me today. I am trying to um, take off the training wheels as far as that's concerned. So I may or may not know the meaning of the card right away. So bear with me. So what does the universe want me to know right now? I'm just going to pull from the middle of the deck and it is the daughter of pentacles. Um, I guess what it would say is like kind of fresh face, fresh ideas, maybe um, time to time to kind of look at the world in you know, like a, a, a more positive light, be a little more generous and giving and a little more, uh, not feminine, but a little more giving, I guess, a little more nurturing. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I would take away from that, and it's not wrong. Okay, uh, what, do I have any cards that I must love in order to work with a tarot deck? No, um, there's no specific rhyme or reason, I just, the overall feel of a deck is what's most important to me. Um, there are some cards that I, like, I love all of these cards. I'm not going to ever complain about them. But there are some cards that I absolutely, um, Star Child, for example, I just got. There are some cards in here that I absolutely hate. But the overall feel of the deck is is fine. I can, I can learn to work with cards I don't like. It's not... It's not a deal breaker for me. Um, it's the overall energy of the deck. I think that it's actually kind of important that we have cards we don't like because it helps us. I think it helps us in a reading. I think it helps us uh, learn a little bit about ourselves and maybe question like, why don't I like that? Um, but yeah, it's 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 kind of important. Um, if I hate the whole deck though, like. My, 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 how I kind of have a hate on for Rider White, like, if, uh, if, or Rider Weight, if I hate the whole deck, I just, I can't work with it. I can't, like, I just don't like the energy of the Rider, um, or of the traditional Riders. I'm learning to work with one, but anywho. Um, let's see. Why, uh, why tarot and not some other divination system? Um... Because I feel like there, it's it, there, there's more to interpret, and there are more shades. Um, there's room to work intuitively and by book meaning. There are so many different ways to work with tarot. You can work with tarot as um, or doorway to your own psyche. You can work with tarot as a divinatory tool. You can do fortune tellery stuff with it. Um, there's just so many different ways to use it. You can use it to journal. You can use it just so many different ways like it's just, just it's so versatile like what's not to love and then the artwork it's so interesting to see I have a pretty substantial deck collection now and it is still so interesting to see how many different interpretations of the same 78 cards all these different artists have so again it's just it's like it, it's just it's so it's so expansive that there, there's no there's no way, like, you cannot love it. I don't understand why people don't. Um, okay, so what is the first book you can remember uh, reading about tarot? So that one's easy. Um, I think a long, long time ago, I got a um, little tarot card set like one of the mini tarot cards in a Christmas stocking and I promptly threw it away because it wasn't anything that I ever thought I would ever use and then eventually I picked up a copy of Revelations Tarot I was just in the bookstore and I was like wow those cards are really pretty um, 
and I'm kind of interested in, and it came with this amazing book um, and that is the first book that I ever read about tarot that's the first one I ever like sat down and read about um, so that would be the revelations um, the revelations guidebook that comes with the deck for revelations tarot um, okay what what tarot person would you like to sit down with for a chat about tarot um all of them I'm I'm not picky about who I would sit down with I would love to sit down with um, hmm I think Kelly from Truth and Story, I really enjoy taking part in her live chats. Uh, she's just very personable, um, uh, uh, very, again, very down to earth. Arwen's got the same kind of um, groundedness to her as well. Um, Wild Moon Woman, um, Elise, she's, she's so posy traction. I feel like talking to her would be like amazing, especially if you needed a pep talk. Um, and then uh, Ethany, of course, she's been doing it for so long. Um, very inspirational. Um, two of Owls, I think I could totally bro down with that guy. Um, I tend to have more of a masculine energy about me, which is why I love seeing guys in tarot. Um, in the 78 cards, he just seems like very knowledgeable about tarot. I like how he doesn't mass collect decks either. So I would love to pick his brain about our mutual love of Wild Unknown and Star Child. Um, and then, I mean, the list could go on and on for many different reasons. Um, but that's just like a quick little. Oh, and uh, John, oh, I forget how to pronounce his last name. Uh, I'm going to say it's Bellatrain. Um, but he's he's got like this most amazing Scottish accent and I think like that would be the main <laughs> it sounds terrible but that would be the main reason for wanting to talk to him um is to listen to all the tarot knowledge come forth in like one of my most favorite accents ever um god that sounds really terrible but you know it is what it is um okay and then let's see uh tell me about one YouTube channel that you watch and why all the previous ones I just listed for all the same reasons. Um, actually, I'm gonna add John's videos are very informative. Um, and like, I like how he does tarot in five minutes. It's 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 quick, it fits into my life really well. Um, Cause I don't always have time to watch all the videos as much as I would love to. Um, oh, um, Tarot Alchemist is another really good one. Uh, she does really great in-depth readings. Nobody's Here, I love her channel. Um, she does really good tarot card reviews. Like, So that's awesome. And uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, who else? Um, I don't know, there's just there's too many to list, really. I've, I've got like a whole subscription list. That's ridiculous. Um, okay, how many tarot decks do I have? I don't know. Um, at last count, if we're counting, like if we're not counting Oracle, I mean, uh, I, I don't want to say because I feel like if uh, Chris ever saw this, he'd get really mad. <laughs> but uh, no, I have I have quite a few. Um, I probably like uh, as far as mass marketed editions are concerned, I'm probably pretty much all done with those, with the exception of a few I or I have on pre order. Um, but I think that uh, from now on I'll be going the indie route. I just I the quality te tends to be better. The um, the feel of the cards tends to be a little bit more personal and a little more they like the cards have their own personalities. Um, and I love supporting independent artists. I mean I'm a small independent retailer. I love small business. Um, so I just I have to go with the small business guys. Um, so I think I'm just gonna limit myself pretty much to indie released decks from now on. Uh, do I mix oracles and tarot when I read? Um, yes and no. Uh, I am of the firm belief that you can you can read tarot on its own, um, but you cannot like depending on how many cards you're gonna pull, you shouldn't read oracles on their own. Um, which I don't know, maybe makes me sound like a weirdo, but. I don't think it oracle most oracle decks are somewhere between 30 to 50 cards maybe um every once in a while you find one that's bigger but they don't have enough cards in them to really get into a good meaty spread um so like if you wanted to do a 
oracle spread with 10 cards i wouldn't recommend it just because you don't have the mix of um the like you don't have an extensive mix of energy in that deck you've only got so much to work with so um tarot on its own is fine oracle on its own if it's three cards or under and then if you're going to do a big spread um, with Oracle cards, mix Oracle and Tarot. Um, and then sometimes at the end of a Tarot reading, I'll pull one or two Oracle cards just to kind of like see if there's anything, any extras in there um, that may or may not be related to the main reading. Um, I find that those messages tend to be totally separate and deal with maybe some Ooh, hiccups, sorry. Deal with some uh, lesser issues. Um, but they're still kind of, they're, and they're still fun. Um, and depending on how the reading is going, if like somebody needs a hug, I'll pull a card from a hug deck and be like, oh, but posse traction. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, have I ever created my own tarot card or deck? No. No, I ain't got no talent. Um, as far as art is concerned. Um, probably never going to a few I would like to see done but um yeah okay and do I read for myself um yes because I am so new to the hobby you have to kind of read for your I need a sip of coffee um you do kind of need to read for yourself to kind of learn the cards and stuff that being said I am not good at interpreting the readings for myself I'm also not really that great at talking about myself either. Um, this this isn't like this doesn't count. This is like very pointed questions, and it's not like if you ask me to sit down and be like, "What are your deepest, darkest fears, and what do you love about yourself, and what do you hate about yourself?" Um, that is not something that I can do. I'm very. Um, I like to think of myself as humble, um, but I I don't like talking about myself usually. I like uh, I like to talk to um, other people about their own stuff, mostly because I don't like dealing with my own shit. I just don't like dealing with it, so um, I avoid it. I'm a procrastinator, it happens. Um, okay, what are your favorite questions to be asked when I do a reading for someone else? Um, I love all kinds of questions because I love the practice. That being said, um, I hate repeat questions about the same thing I just answered for you yesterday. Um, I find, because I participate in some online reading forums, I find that I get the same question over and over from the same people. I actually have, like... I find myself, um, like, I have to be very specific about the types of readings that I want to do, who I'm willing to read for, and um, what kind of questions that I want that day. Like, there are so many times I can answer if, like, Timmy Jim Bob, like, really loves me. He broke up with me 5,000 months ago, and I think I should get back with him, even though we haven't spoken in a million years. And um, if I've answered that for you five times already, I don't want to do it a sixth. Um, I do not need cards to tell you that he just isn't that into you. Um, but yeah, no, I love all kinds of questions. I love the um, spiritual path questions. I love career and business questions. I'm very much a career and business person. Um, I love questions about pets. I would love, love to read for pets. I would like, I'm actually going to, once I get card meetings down and once I kind of get my um, focus, I'm going to learn, like, once I get, like, you know, once I get a solid foundation, I would love to read for animals. I would love to do Reiki for animals. I would love to have a pet communicative um, specific kind of thing going on. Not that I wouldn't want to read for people either, but I would just love for that to be my niche. Um, okay, so what are your favorite, um, I'm sorry, what is the craziest thing that's happened to me during a reading? Um... I don't have any really good crazy stories. Um, just, I mean, the most I've ever had are a couple of stalker cards. Um, I've had a couple of really accurate readings. I actually had one really accurate reading the other day. All of a sudden, like, well, not the other day. It was a couple weeks ago. But um, during the reading, all of a sudden, I got, like, this very positive, like, get up and go energy. And that's usually not me. I'm very analytical when I do a reading. Like, you know, you look at it, you get your into you get your intuitive vibes, and then I'll go and I'll look up all the book meanings in several books, and then I'll think on it again, and then I'll just be like, okay, I'm just gonna like tippity type, and like I very so, like it takes me forever to do an online reading, especially because I love to choose my words carefully when I write. 
Um, and then I have to go back and self edit because I have this tendency to embellish or add um, like personal, like not like story details and stuff and like just, just my little speaking idiosyncrasies. So I like to cut that out. Um, but all of a sudden I just got this like very like get up and go vibe, like posi traction, like you can do this, just motivated, like, oh yes, like go fight the world. And that was exactly what my sitter needed to hear. Um, and then a couple of really specific details that I didn't even realize were specific details. So that was kind of cool. Um, let's see. And then that's, I oh, that's it. That's all the questions. Um, so yeah, this was a, a, a video response to Arwen's Terror Tag 15. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you have any questions for me, you can put them in the, the comments down below. I'll put links to her original video in the doobly-doo. I keep doing this. And thank you for listening to me ramble on. Happy reading, you guys.